Frost here, and we are playing some Disco Elysium today. Um, I think last time we tried to get him done, yeah, so we can't throw, we couldn't throw up, so we gotta leave. So we gotta figure out how to, find out how not to throw up. Um, we can go back and ask the lady for more stuff, maybe, see if she has any more. And see what she says here. Oh, she doesn't have anything. Okay. Well, I guess let's go back to the store. I'm, I'm kind of annoyed, like that it won't let you like three T's. How do you medic? All right, I guess let's go in here and buy the stuff we need. Because we used it and it didn't work. We still failed. So, let's see. I want... I think they the drum, drum mead. Let's see. Let's go look at our book. Close the water lock on Wednesday. Explore Whirling's secret passages. Who put clothes in the trash? Um, I asked Kuno, I thought, maybe, but I can ask him again. Read the watermarks. Inspect victim's body. Equip and complete volumetric shit compressor thought. Okay, well that's Okay, that's a time one. Alright, so let's see. We have the volumetric compressor shit thought on. So I guess 30 more minutes. Oh, okay. Alright. Let's get out of here. Well I guess I don't need the Magnesium? Was it magnesium? If I, if I track down. Is what this like? Ammonia. I need ammonia. Um, there is no ammonia here. I have 450. What's. How much is this? $4. Raincoat gives you better endurance. Sorry, let's leave. Can I get a. Alcohol. Or I can get cigarettes. Um, let's get the Pilsner. That's fine. Alright, and then let's use it. Items. Tools. How do I... Oh, hold it right hand. All right, so how do I use it then? Well, hello. Someone seems to have found a bottle of alcohol. Here's what the magic happens. Look at the bottle. Let's drink it. What a solid can of mass-produced piss water. Well, over 10% alcohol is in this so-called beer. Pop it up before it gets too warm. Success. While the gods of mass production have made this alcohol container laughably easy to open, a child could have done it. Open the bottle. There's a satisfying pop as the cap comes off. My hair on the back reds is like an army of attention. You've been here before. Welcome back, detective. You're home now. Uh, let's take a sip. Physique raised. I lost the morale. We'll take, take that. We gained 30 experience, and we did the cat. We finished the task. In the bottom right corner of your screen, <coughs> there's a drink button. It gives plus one physique skills, physical instrument, half light, electrochemistry, endurance, pain, threshold, shivers. This is good before rolling a white check, but damages your morale. And morale. And remember, from the void we came, and to the void we must return. Oh, so it only lasts for 60 minutes. Okay, well. Oh, I have to acquire a copy of the city map. That's cool. There's a map, though. That's good. Um, let's put that there. Ooh, let's, um, put that there.
There we go. That's fine. Keep the flashlight up. Let's walk around with the flashlight all the time. Okay, so we haven't explored the bookstore. We haven't explored the pawn shop. Um, and we haven't talked to these people. I guess let's talk to these people and see what they say. For now. Scott? Ask the man with jolly eyes, tilting his head. You're hazy on the notion of scab. Smells like politics, though. Maybe it's got something to do with the flask he reaches for from time to time. <coughs> what did you call you? Uh, nope, not gonna say that. Oh no, not this again. You just got away from that fucking kid. Uh, I'm not a scab, I'm a cop. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> Speaking of, what brings the RCM here to the wild north? Come to see the strife? Um, I've come to Martinez investigating a murder. Murder, huh? That sounds like a lot of hard work. You've never seen me investigating a murder. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing. He wishes back. That's okay. I have no idea what I'm doing either. I don't even know what day it is. He thinks and then decides, don't tell me. It's a better day that way. Um, I'm a bit shot on money right now. Can you... Sure thing, my friend. I can help you out. He flips the coin towards you. Hand-eye coordination, man. Success! The coin lands in your hand as if it has always belonged there. The swallow returns. Appreciated. Oh, I gained a dollar. Nice. Always glad to help out the RCM. Shame I can't do more. Things are meager at the moment due to... He nods his head towards the protesters. You know, the winter's fat... The winter's fat is slowly running out and all. Still better than scabbing, though. The union has problems getting by? Nothing to worry out. Really. The jam's a bit of a mess. Cargo can't get in or out. The rationing is a bit stricter as all. Well. Supplies should last in the strike, though. Every little bit helps, you know. I'm always glad to help you out when possible. Not like these slithering scabs. He looks at them in disbelief. I need to know what's behind this gate I'm exploring. My friend, I respect the right to roam. The open range awaits. He gazes over the roundabout with a glint of longing. Does this mean you can let me through the gate? I don't operate in that capacity. I'm not a grantor of passage. He takes a swig and points to the stairs to his last. The passage grants itself. If it's all so simple, why don't the strike breakers just go up the stairs? That simple? I just walk in? I walk right past Measurehead and go in past Measurehead. Yeah, the two and a half meter tall Seminese premises there. He points to the bridge above the gates. Walk right past him. Right. Then press the button to unlock the door. Aha. Then go past him again. And you enter harbor through the office. Esta. So you're saying it's actually quite difficult. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure it's not completely impossible. For example, you could best measure hidden a physical confrontation. Or you can convert to his semi-supremacist worldview, or, hmm, he strokes his mustache. Maybe it actually is completely impossible. Um, has anyone ever here bested him in physical confrontation? Not yet, no. He fixes his eyes on you, valuing your prowess. He's incredibly strong. Nothing a couple solid hooks from Dexter and Sinister won't fix. Has any of the scabs tried converting to his worldview? Jean-Luc himself would say the philosophy has proven overly heroic for the scabs to convert to. Not enough intuition. Got it. Another thing. What's the strike about, anyway? You know, serious business. He smiles. I'm sure the big boss will be glad to tell you. You'll have to ask him first. He's a chatty guy. Wants to talk about the strike. Return once you've met the union boss and are on a better footing with the organization. Nice talk. Gotta get moving. Ooh, what are these? Let's see. A notice. In case of strike, press button behind guard. 
A hermetically sealed door locked by electronic means. There's no lock kicking or door kicking in this one. No man Natchez measure head. I mean, can I just like push, push the button? <coughs> your body betrays your degeneracy. Your body betrays oh. your degeneracy. Yeah, measure head. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. Say nothing, size him up first. Are you admire my mortal physiology. A ripple of muscle passes underneath his skin. He lets you look. You must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this Asial Pinacle. Be calm and sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not a threat to me. My body is unimportant. I'm with the police and we need to get into the harbor. That is precise. The negligence that has led you to succumb to unruly. His face contorts in disgust as he were smelling a dead rat. You reek of it. An invisible sword of unruly emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. You're right, I'm an alcoholic. Now I need to enter the harbor. No, you don't. You need to get another thing. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving up the influence. The influence of the Amazon Dwee's race is waning. Please, and I need you to comply Jump now. Motion. Signs of a late stage neurodegenerative disorder. How far the Occidental Ablo has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy race theory and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures, like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. I don't disagree. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby. Yeah, you know it. There's a button right behind him, just out of reach. It must be the one that opens the harbor door. Come on, I see you move about 20 centimeters back. It is my task to keep the general comments from entering the door. Push him out of the way. That is right. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting I said push, other not punch, but so. to a great world war. Bring your troops to the Simenon Islands and to Boogie Street, and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum. The walls will be lined with bottles of all wool. Your beloved. Inside, we will start the odds to homosexuality called art and your micros values colors. This is your chance. He's talking, ripping into him with punch and catch him off guard. No, there's a peaceful solution. You could internalize Measure Head's race theory. You could take. He would take you as one of his own. Wouldn't that mean I have to become a son of super? Semi supremacist myself? Well, yes. Why don't you want to be a semi supremacist? So, what if you're not semi -nice? You can be anything. Um, I guess this one has a higher success rate, so let's go with this one. 
Subscribe to his advanced race theory. Ask what kind of races are there first. Classification is core to this stuff. Um, okay. Measurehead, I am new to this world. Help me understand its races. I need to know what kind of different races there are. Do you? The lieutenant looks at you. Whisper, this is for the thing. The lieutenant looks toward the harbor's electronic door and then to you. He lets out an audible sigh. You're obviously a li liberal seal light, the man tells him, a polyculturalist. I can see it from your love of the microtechnology and your sartorial choices. Do not deny your friend the truth you have denied yourself. There are three categories of race. Type A, the heroic races. Type B, the servile races. And, and the vile C through F race, cauldron of pederasty. Which one do you need education on? The vile CF race, cauldron of pederasty. I knew you would go straight for the vile cauldron. Everyone does. He's not looked surprised. You need to first learn about type A and B to appreciate the depravity of the chimeric races. Yeah, I mean, otherwise, the wind twirls her, he twirls her hair. It just won't make any sense. Yes, it would seem nonsensical. Alright, so let's do type A. Those are the Seminese, the Areopag Areopagite, and the Occidentals, excluding the Mon, of course. The Mon are riddled with eczema to the point where they find it impossible to smile. They are all lactose intolerant, a common result of inbreeding. A receding genetic pool has led the Mon to rep on reprehensible street parades in Mon cities like Stad Skinal and Vredefort, wearing wooden clogs on their feet and little green tassels in their hats. Okay, got it. Who are the type A then in your view? The Vespertines and the Mes Messinians? of Vesper and Messina, the ancient Metorians of Mitio by the golden Pisantic sun, the Ceresni, Ceresni of Sulaclef, and even the North Konigsteiners all have type A race propensities. The other large Mondial civilization, the Mesk, are too yellow and oleaginous to count as a heroic race. True, they are violent and expansionist, but they have a glandular problem. He draws his finger across his face. Overproduction of sebum. Sebum is leaking into their brains, making them listen to the El Mariachi music and eat toxic minced meat based on food, or based food, which in turn only produces more sebum. And who are the Seminese and Aeropagites in this? As proven by the Mon and the Mesk, Occidental Type A is in retrograde. The Seminese and the Aeropagite are on the ascent. What's the difference between the Seminese and the Aeropagites? The Aeropagites are sleek, long-headed, and Seminese are powerful, mesomorphic. The former is an immutable progenitor, unchanged since the super of Percarnassus. Paracarnassus. <clears throat> Ancient brains rest in their slender skulls. He falls silent, contemplating the beauty and the mystery. The latter is perfected and adapting. Together they form the semeno oropagite or semiopagite super race. That is all. There are no more type A races in the world. Nature was not capable of more. Okay. Type B. Type B are the unheroic oh, let's click this let's see what we're doing so volumetric shit compressor is done good this one's only five and a half hours so what does this do for me breakthrough is imminent Type B are the unheroic races, amorphous non-competitors of the great race. The Kajkos and the Vakliers, they are mud-colored people. The Kajkos of Grad are what you 
would call white officer in suspect description. Mud colored? <laughs> to an untrained eye, the cottage could appear white and pinkish like a ham sandwich, but look into their eyes and you will see. He squints full of sage when they are of an indistinct muddy color, and so is their skin, unhealthy, sweaty, and ashen. Pinkness is a racial quality that has to be earned through centuries of advanced ballistic warfare and cultural domination that the grad people have undergone for drinking alcohol and smoking the generic tabac herb and for eating potato. The Kajko, the countless micro nationalities of grad, <coughs> are all inexplicably obsessed with potatat. Potat? The only thing they like more is dividing into microscopic ethnoscates like political amoeba. Wouldn't he be one of wouldn't he be one for ethnostates? And you don't like ethnostates? They are microscopic. The Semino are Pagite superstate will cover the entire remaining planetary crust, uninterrupted from Holy Seminine to the Boreal Plateau of Catala. Catala. Its leaders will be the genetic epitome of the Seminese and Aeropagite stock, elected by nature, not the base, inert spoilage called Demos. And the Vaclers, Vaclers you mentioned? Revoclians halfway between type A and the racial cauldron. Too mixed to know right from wrong, you tried your degenerate little revolution, which was the single greatest failure committed by humans in our 82,000 year history on this planet. Is it 82,000 years that we've been recording history? You haven't have very little idea of what's happening, but that seems a little off. Um, go away, stupid political thoughts. What was this revolution? The revolution came to Revacol from Grad in. Zerath ridden potato carts. It is literally an illness, a prion disease that leaves the parietal, parietal and frontal lobe ridden with holes, a soft sponge like mass of dementia, hallucinations, and paranoia. Revolutions is fatal. The revolution is fatal, familial insomnia. A hereditary prion disease condition passed from the Kajko to the Occidentals. He pauses in theoretic self reflection. But not sexuality. Probably though, trade routes. Probably through trade routes and potato acid. The prime component of the potato plant. He nods. Enough with type B mediocre. He nods, satisfied with the outcome. The vile CF race cauldron of pederasty, please. Type CF are a museum of failed chimeric experiments and tragic maladaptions. They are tortured creatures waiting to be put to sleep. Your morbid interest in them worries me. Yes, better not go into it. It would be cruel, the man agrees, to entertain ourselves with their deformities. Were there any able-bodied races you needed education on? Now that I understand through all the types, do I understand advanced race theory? You understand nothing. To solve the great race enigma, you have to first ask yourself, what is the race enigma? You have, nev you have not even worded the mystery, let alone solved it. How do I word the mystery? You need to internalize. What have you heard here today? Then return to me. This clarity does not come instantly. I cannot possibly imagine what else we have to discuss. Type B. Revoc. 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 Revocolian. Your love for disco music and venereal disease. You know anything about this mug? He is not so much as glance at the object. This your kind of thing? Stop showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. He had nothing to do with it. I haven't looked at the cup yet. Um, I guess it's leave. Let's see. Thought complete. Volumetric shit compression. Bizarre scientific news from Revocal West today. The police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. Those metallic 
hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit singularity lasts. All endurance white checks unlocked. Learning cap for endurance raised to four. Okay. And then we want some advanced race theory. Oh, well, I can forget this, right? Wait, if I forget it, do I have to stop using it? I have to use this in order to get past the guy. Factual memory returns. Um, let's stop learning taxation. And let's learn advanced race theory. Alright. So. Can we go down here? Thank you. Alright. Let's get down into the streets and see if there's anything else we can talk to. No one else we can talk to. Right? Oh, this guy? One guy, this guy right here. See the union boss? Bastard! Scab we have a right to work! The man yells toward the harbor gates. His voice is the loudest of the lot, and oddly scratchy, screechy for a man his size. What's going on? Pull here? up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. The broad shouldered alpha male turns to you. He is a full head taller than everyone else. You're to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down? Why should I? We're to fight for a cause! Strikes usually have problems with people who have causes. Okay, then I'm thinking no. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work! Right to work! Besides, we're not that different. It helps the people see us talking. Cops and strike breakers together. It shows authorities are on our side. It builds confidence. Uh, what kind of cause Rights are we talking about? Rights of people. Rights of workers. To have gainful employment to make a salary and feed their families. Seems reasonable. His manner of speaking is wooden, the tone of voice bland and uninspired, almost as if compiling replies from a set of learned phrases. Uh, regardless, I have some questions Maybe for you. Maybe you should ask them the question. Like why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you! We have families to feed, you piece of shit. So do we, scub. The loitering man hollers in return. Uh, I want to get into the harbor too. Have fun, he snorts. Union shits are on full strike. Don't think they're going to let you through the gates. You trying to meet their fat boss? Um, I'm interviewing people about a murder that took place here behind the hostile cafeteria. There. I know nothing about a murder. His reply is snappy and terse. Absolutely nothing. Wouldn't put it past these harbor bugs. They'd do anything to stay alive. Right to work. He again shakes his large fist. And turns back to you. It's shameful. Cops do nothing. You should bring backup. Open the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment work for workers is a crime. Mm, sure, why not? Why not? I see numerous reasons not to pick a side in this local matter. Pity. He turns around and bells the gates. Let us work. Um... You don't have any tips on how to punch a guy out, do you? Say a really big race theorist guarding a button? He smirks. Now before you get in there and get your ass whooped, learn by failure, I always say. He might have some advice, but you gotta at least try to fight Measure at first. Return if you fail. Should I try to fight him, though? Like, if I try to fight him, is that gonna be a problem? It was a pretty low, like, chance. I mean, I could try hitting him and see what happens. Blind him with the light first. The unpromising race beauty. Oh, I failed. Uh oh. The unpromising race people returns. How did this happen? Your little fist is in his giant hand. He's squeezing it, it hurts. 
You must be out of your mind, degenerate drunk. The pressure on your hand becomes unbearable. Say it, I am a degenerate alcoholic. I'm a degenerate alcoholic. Good, he releases your hand. I leave before you humiliate your homoerotic organization any further. What are those tattoos that you're supposed to mean? Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. He gestures toward the lorry man down the street. I'm not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic freno logic grid on my skull and features this and features this should dispel any doubt. Drawings are precise and look true to their pseudo-scientific ambitions. One thing, however, is not entirely free of throwbacks in the phylogenetic tree. His large jaw, for example, could be a trait indicative of criminalism, and his earlobes could be smaller. Are you sure? I mean, that jaw is clearly an atavastic stigmata. The atavistic stigmata makes pussy say, yes, plenty. Okay, weird. Babe, thanks. The tattoos... On his stone face, briefly form a smile, but I got this. Let's try to hit him again. Fuck it. Nope. This happened again. The Titan has your fist locked in his hand like he's twisting it. Another fit of criminal rage. The pressure on your has already broken hand. On your oh, your already broken hand becomes unbearable. Who are you in your own words? Degenerate alcoholic. Good. He releases your small hand. Go now before you enter cardiac arrest. Um, let's see. Your earlobes are too big. The size of the earlobes is not real craniometric criteria. Everyone knows this. Your earlobes are flawless, Jean-Luc. Yes, the man falls silent, face motionless. You sure I'm not craniometrically superior to you? You exhibit forward projection of the jaw, indicative of schizophrenia and sexual inaccountability from a purely aesthetic standpoint. The dimple in your jaw makes you look like a baby. This is not craniometry, just an observation. What else? It is impossible to see any more in your bone structure. It is covered in the ravages of algal. From what remains of your features, I can see fleshy lips, baldness of the head, and long arms relative to your lower limbs. This leads me to conclude you are not a police officer, you are a common criminal, an offspring of murderers and sailors from Shirley Clef and Vesper, and possibly even the degenerate sheep herders of Ubi. Interesting, so one of my ancestors was Cyril Clef and the other Vesper? Your racial heritage is uninteresting, it is the same as all Brevocalians. Your parents and their parents made the decision to reproduce while under the influence of alcohol. That is the only reason you are here. He's right there. It's impossible to get it out unless you're both drunk. It's too scary when people are sober. Okay, well, let's leave. I have damaged morale now. Well, that didn't work. I can go back and ask the guy if he has some, hit, some stuff. Oh, I should talk to him. I'd appreciate it if you didn't force us into situations where we have to shoot random civilians. Because that won't get us anywhere. I'm not even sure the one bullet in my chamber holds what would pr even prick that Hulk. Can't promise that I might attack him again. Lieutenant groans but doesn't say anything. That's right, he should do it again. It's the last thing he'll be expecting. I mean, probably, right? Let's go back and talk to this dude again. This guy has some advice for us. Nice question with the native. Don't let the chief fool you next time. You don't need to be up in his face. Leave yourself space to move. Not bad advice, actually. That's my Let's talk trick. about our right to work. I need you to be my champion to get Sean Luke up there. No, I'm not a fighter, I'm a worker. Um, okay, well, can I go back up there now? Can I fight him again, or am I just wasting time? I feel like maybe I'm just wasting time at this point. <laughs> The 
I'm promising. Seventy percent. Return. No. Man. Oh, yeah. It's happened again. He's fist twisting it. Degenerate alcoholic. Okay, well I guess maybe I'll come back one more time. Oh shit, I gotta get some more morale. Uh, I need to go figure out... Let's go back to the store and see if I can get anything that... boosts morale with my 250. Damn, I'm getting... I'm, this, I'm not doing very good today. Thank you. Use that shit. Okay. So, let's go talk to Kuno and then go inside. I also haven't checked out this thing over here, there's like a button to press. Alright, Kuno. And I think, is there a way I can go up here now? It's all like, yeah. It's all blocked off. Okay, so I can't actually go up there. I can talk, oh, I never talked to that kid before either. I can talk to him after I talked to Kuno. You know, I keep throwing up and can't investigate the body at all. Yeah, like a fucking volcano. This kid is mimicking violent puking noses. Fucking pathetic. You look like you didn't die there. Oh, hey. Maybe you got some advice for me? I mean, you're obviously handling quite well. Yeah, Kuno's got some advice for you. The kid looks to his left and to his right and leans towards you. What are you, like 80, right? Maybe you should stop embarrassing yourself in front of a fucking kid. Hmm, perhaps you could compress this negative injury and turn it into some sort of Kunified non-vomitor. Kumified non-vomitor, here I come. That's right, turn your weakness into conceptual strengths. Try it again now. Oh, is this gonna like... Ooh, there we go. Shit compressed and kunified non-vomitor. 97%. Nice. We got it. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a spell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your sides, your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Do they always do that? They do after seven days, yes. We're deep in decomposition here. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enameled boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched with lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the bench appears above appears industrial in strength. <laughs> Inspect the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick palmer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you, out of place somehow. Those are clearly not boots, they're armor, possibly part of a larger set. These aren't just boots, are they? They're armor. Indeed, with his notebook under his arm, the lieutenant crouches to inspect the soles. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. What kind of armor is this exactly? Ceramic plate, zirconium dioxide most likely. This is where the make would, might make would be. Where? Under the heel. Fair weather. He turns the boot slightly. Fair weather model. T500 VE. I'm guessing this is vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Um, this material looks out of place here. It is. It's expensive. 
The lieutenant draws a line at the condensation ceramic with his index finger. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. For the northwest region of Revocal, an officer's average income is 5,500 real, unadjusted for rank. Ka-ching, baby, nods the boots. By ka-ching, do you mean... He tilts his head. Let's not log them in evidence. Let's steal them. No, that's not what I meant. Of course, he nods. Um... Pull the boot off. This feels dangerous, are you sure? Um... Mm, yeah, let's take it off. The stench fills your nostrils. As you push downward, an ominous creaking sound comes from above. Stop, the lieutenant voice shrugs. He looks at you with the boot under your arm. Pig is going to pull his head off. Continue. Brutal. Oh, this is a bad idea, isn't it? You're going to pull his head off. Continue. Do it. Uh, I'm going to pull his head off, right? Yes, that's what I said. You'll compromise the corner's case if you do, so please don't. Indeed, from this angle, it does look like the neck isn't going to take much more. Being dead for a week has all but liquefied his muscles. What are you trying to achieve anyway? Why are you hanging on to that boot? Um... Are we not detectives? There may be clues inside the boot. Maybe we should concentrate on what's outside the boot and leave what's inside for the boys of processing. Just this once. Besides, he taps on the boot. There's no way you're getting them off with all that organic matter in his body has been flowing down into the boots for seven days. They're fused to his feet now. Why do you think there's only one thing left on him? You're sure there's a way to peel them off, but the first, the body needs to be down, and second, it wouldn't probably be better if the lieutenant wasn't around. Sounds like a plan, except... The anticipation makes you crack your fingers. Feels nice. Nice and cracky. Uh, okay, got it. The processing will take care of them. With the situation in the morgue, you yield nothing. We must pick our fights. He looks toward you. Should we continue? Um, yeah. Let's back off and look at the corpse. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt. Okay. Inspect the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. This is a steel-reinforced cargo belt. Lashing belt. Big brother of the regular cargo belt. It's used for tying cargo under six rotor airships. Don't ask me how I know, but this is lashing belt used for airlifting cargo. Airlifting? I thought it was used for lorries, for strapping cargo to them. Well, this is getting more interesting. Apparently this is the reinforced kind for transport. My brain tells me so. He nods. The local harbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense they use whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. <coughs> We're assuming dock workers from the harbor did it? The brief suggested as much. Political motivated from the ongoing strike. Did you not get the briefing? My past has undergone total annihilation. Nothing remains. My mother, the love of my life, certainly not a briefing. Okay, you should ask me for one. The first moment we get. Hmm. How'd they even get him up there? A noose is around one of those things that's easier to use one way around. He points to the buckle, tying the belt above the branch. Did they climb up using the kid's ladder? That ladder can't carry a grown man. <coughs> I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. He makes a pulling motion. Could be. The shape of the branch supports the theory. Um, they sure wanted him to stay up there. The rope is reinforced with steel wiring. I was afraid it would be. 
He rises to inspect the loose. Thin steel wiring, parallel strands, it makes getting him down more problematic than I had assumed. Inspect the tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white scar is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around the heart. His corpse is masked by, marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. Is this a microelectric system? <coughs> I've only cursed of knowledge of the scientific or cybernetics. I would not know if it were, but it is not quite complex enough, is it? It doesn't seem familiar from the insides of any radio computer your mind can imagine. The somewhat organic lines remind you of old filament memory units, but not quite. No, you're nowhere near right. I'm missing something here. So am I. A sudden ringing fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminum from his coat pocket and pulls it open. It sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears, some sort of camera. Let the lieutenant work. Shit, Kuno, what the fuck is that? An instant color camera. He produces two metal capped amples and s clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A sl thin slot shines there. I only have two apples, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse peering into it. The lens needs adjusting, then... Picture. A se a sound. A shrill fa flash. Oh man, I need to take a bracket. Take a... I'm, I need to take a minute to breathe. And I said bracket. Oh, okay. Okay, let's see. Let's go back to it. A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ample of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper rolling out. On it, a color-perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. In case we need it, the lieutenant sh says and shakes the paper, letting it dry in the cold wind. Cool machine. Yes, he slides the camera closed and tucks it away on his belt. It's pretty cool, isn't it? There's only one ample left. Use it wisely. What do we need this photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his bill, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It was a letter to us. Some, to us. Someone should decipher it. We need to show it around. Can I have it? I should look at it later without the corpse smell. Sure, just don't lose it. He hands you a piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. Alright, let's look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There's no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. <clears throat> Dark brown, his hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head, the death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Tell me who you are, dead man. Can I get a can I get a, a success today, please? The corpse is dead silent. You have no idea why you just said that. Who is he? He's a male, forty to fifty, with an athletic build. Um, squint and take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours post mortem. We can use it to see if the corpse had been tampered with. Does the position of the time of death match the discolorization? Observe. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. His face and his hands are pink. Thighs, too. I see it. He adjusts his glasses. His neck, too. The lividity goes right up to his chin. We have good, well-pronounced discolorization here. Relax your eyes. The monster comes back into focus. An expression of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boots. So what do you think? He's beaten up. See the bruises? I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe in all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with the little sport. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. 
He means you fucked him up good, Kuno. The girl yells. Fucked him up brutal-like. I think he was up right after death. His hands, feet, and neck are discolored. Agreed. He points to his belt, especially on the neck. The belt acted like a tourniquet keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis supports a, banging, a hanging. Yep, seems like a lynching to me. Everyone here seems to corroborate that assumption, but we should still get him down before signing a probable cause of death. Okay. So how do we get him down? He stops to think and checks his notes. Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some things when he's down. Step back and have another look first. Alright, so let's see. Was there stuff I didn't... No, you're right at the harbor, but... Well, okay, so we did all those. The tattoos. Something is coming out of him. A pool of blood and feces is eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purged liquid is dripping into it by drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck he's saying? He's talking about shit. And breathe into the toilet sometime before death. Maybe. He doesn't really want to dwell on it too long. I think he's dead. I agree. His personality is no longer part of the world. Totally dead. Um, the world is no longer shares his personality and its composition. There was a time for that, and it ended seven days ago. He nods in agreement with advanced peace and conceptualization. Having molded over for lieutenant says, that sounds about right. Yes. Alright, let's back off. Let's do the boots again to see, because I was supposed to tap them, I think. What happened to the rest of it? The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more on after seven days. So where's the rest of the armor? There's a task for that now. That's new. We should keep a lookout for the pieces. The armor could yield information. He nods toward Kuno, who's eyeing you suspiciously. This is one thing he might actually know. Maybe he was wearing these boots and there's no rest of the armor? No, I think he had something precious underneath the clothes. They had to get it, had to remove the jeans and shirt when we found them to get, we found to get to it. <coughs> and this kind of armor is often worn under fabrics. Nice, that makes sense. Um, what if they told him to strip before they hung him, to demean him? They usually hang them coolly naked for that. La puta madre, the Mazda, the Besmerts. Besmerdis and the like. This one still has his underpants. <sniffs> Fucking talking about underpants. Clearly Kuno would like to interject something here, but that's not enough for him to hold on to. How could this man afford such expensive hardware? <clears throat> that's for us to find out. My initial report in the area suggests he was a security guard for the harbor company, but that's just hearsay. Initial report? It's just something I scraped together from my situation. An area report in the Martinez. I'm sure you did the same. These look pretty advanced for a security guard. I agree. The equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Knock on the boot. A small belt-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. The pry bar on your hand is itching for some action. Swing the pry bar at the boot. The metal connects with the same ding. The sound does not appear to get louder. Lieutenant cups his ear. Did you hear that? A click. Yes, like dice rolling. This is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads some incoming energy horizontally from plate to plate. When the plates connect, there's a click. That's the sound you heard. He points to the toe. See these lines? Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are a hundred of them all together. Like whirls of floorboards. The design looks inorganic, influenced by highly resistant wood materials like lignum vitae and ebony, perhaps. What does this remind me of? If trees were made of porcelain, this is what their cross-sections would look like. Run your finger over the lines. 
The smooth, glossy surface fractures into even more intricate interconnections, peaking on the right sabaton, where you notice <laughs> the worlds are in the shapes of a letter and number combination E50100000. Looks like the serial number on the right sabaton. Good, can you read it to me? He dips the drying ball point of his pen into his tongue. Run the number on the victim's armor. We have a make and a number, that's something. We can use the radio on my Kanemo when we're done. Either station will chase it for us. Okay. Um, let's... Yep, the preliminary examination is done. Let's get him down from there. Hey, we leveled up. Hmm. Steel reinforced belt rep represents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle to approach the belt. He doesn't actually think the challenge is unique. He thinks it's frustrating, annoying, and harder than he thought. Man, we got so many new tasks from this. The cadaver is good 1.2 meters, meters up. Neither of us can reach the belt without assistance, and even if we do, there's a question of cutting the airship strength the material. Um, could someone else do it? Someone else? You mean, like, the police? What was that about processing then? Weren't they supposed to take care of the boots? Why don't they help? Um, can't the boys from processing take care of this? No. Why? Think of the boys from processing as murderers. Only instead of people, they murder crime scenes. Processing is a wrecking crew. They know how to commission off items and how to work the incinerator in the morgue. I know it's hard, but I assure you the others won't come to help us. We have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down fast. We could saw the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch. Yeah, it seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way. With less falling down off trees. Maybe we could shoot him down. Yeah, the enthusiasm is unrestrained. Bang, bang, time, pig. Shoot his head off. <coughs> Lieutenant remains unaffected. How? Where the buckle ties the rope to the branch, that's a good spot to aim. Point to it. There, the buckle holds the point, the belt together. Where? He corrects his glasses. Ah, yes, I see. If the shot hits there, might be a chance it'll release the belt. Yeah, now we're talking entertaining the Kuno with some shit. They'll miss. The pigs will miss, Kuno. Mmm. Wait, let me try. The man's burrows furrow. He appears in too deep in concentration to even notice what you said. Take the shot, Lieutenant. What's the worst thing that could happen? I'll blow his head off. Take it. Take the shot. Yeah, take the shot. Kuno wants some of that shit. Silence. With his eyebrows, elbows sharp, Lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops the paper cartridge into the barrel. Separates the scouring stick and gives the cartridge five tucks. Securing it in place. That's a Kajal A990 Armistice Mass Produced Muzzle Loader. A ascetic, frugal, and one of the most common firearms in the world. He then steps back and assumes the Thalatis position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches, his finger on the trigger. Say nothing. He's gonna fucking move! The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. The cloud of smoke slowly parts the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. Fucking idiot. Kuno could've hit it easy, but this Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? It's okay, man. Kuno's sorry, too. Kuno's so sorry for... Binoc... Binoclard? Lieutenant doesn't say a word. He looks at the gun in his hand. Try again, maybe? No, we're lucky as it is. I didn't break anything. And the victim's remains uncompromised. He looks around at the windows overlooking the yard. Any more mistakes could put us in an unfortunate position with the locals. We'd have an eye on us. I didn't have any. We have eyes on us. I didn't do us any favors with that. What now? Can I have the gun? I should try. It's bad as is. Us shooting firearms like punks. He pauses, then shrugs, and proceeds to load the pistolet. 
Go ahead. I'm not stopping you. Just don't lose it. A piece shines in Astro's hand. They only have one gun. This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Take the gun. Yeah. Feel. Yeah. Take it, you fucking. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Take it and shoot yourself in the mouth. Feel the weight first. The cold piece of bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your finger fits right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. The fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth. Point the gun at the belt. <coughs> the buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand supporting your gun arm. Close your left eye first. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, catching the noon light as the corpse slowly rotates. The slow movement of the branch in the wind and your shoulders directing the gun sink up, dancing hypnotically. Still 28%, man. Or what? You gonna fuck me up? Her voice is almost a whisper now. You gonna... Fuck me, pig. Is that what this is about? Uh, I don't know, man. Oh, I missed. Plum of smoke erupts in the barrel. Your hand goes numb from the explosion. With your ears still ringing, you load the weapon and see what happened. You miss the belt, but hit the corpse straight in the chest. The bits of rib cage protrude from the skin. No blood, only a murky sludge dripping down its belly. The sudden stink makes your eyes water. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's gonna fucking cry. I knew it. There's something wrong with your weapon, Lieutenant. It keeps missing. The armistice is a sufficiently precise officer, especially at close range. It takes his sidearm from me and holsters it. It's not the gun's fault you can't shoot, it's your pig hands. Pigs don't have hands, they have like fucking hooves or something. Kuno has hands, he displays his little fingers. Kuno can shoot that shit down for you. Lieutenant, we should entrust Kuno with your service weapon, he says he can shoot it down. The man does not dignify that with an answer. He snaps the button in his holster and says, We still need to get him down somehow. His tone is growing tired now. The stench makes him turn away from the corpse. But how? The bad way. The way I didn't want us to. By asking the harbor for help. They have the tools and the men. If they put him up there, they can take him down too. Um, but how do we get inside the harbor? From the gates. By negotiating or fighting. I'm unenthusiastic about fighting. He looks around. We can try to find some secret third path. It's unlikely, though. To the gates. Let's negotiate. But won't it be dangerous to ask the suspects for help with the victim's body? To be indebted to Everard to Claire? Very much, yes. Which is why I would have preferred for us to handle it ourselves. Clearly we can't. Suck my dick, bitches. Who's Everard Claire? The leader of the Union, a dangerous and corrupt man. From what I hear, you don't want to owe him much. Yeah, don't go being someone else's bitches. You're Kuno's bitches. Alright, well, that didn't work out very well. Um, we got an instant photo of tattoos, and we also have the Yellow Man mug. Um, let's interact with these, just for a few minutes. Photo of tattoos. We read that already. Who are you? gone. What's the meaning of the tattoo? For you to discover you've gotten as far as you will without assistance. Okay, put the photo away. Interact with the yellow man mug. It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? Not much. There's quite a lot to read into here, actually. Look at all the content. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> what are you going to say about a broken, tossed away mug that you dug out of the garbage? Um... This mug is an example of prejudice. I'm going to use it as an example of what not to do. 
But it was in the trash. Why not just call it out when you see it? Or do some volunteering work. Just finish your case, detective. Okay, well that was interesting. We have so many. Get the boots. Ask him to tell you about the case. The victim's tattoos. Where's the rest of the armor? So we need to add, talk to Kuno and then go to the the car. Fuck, there's Kuno here. I want to discuss the body with you again. Where's the rest of his armor? Kuno doesn't give a shit about the armor. How come? Kuno's fuck gimp got one big thing wrong with him. He's a fucking mutant. A mutant? Look at him. He points to the body. Fucking growth hormone shit. He's a giant. The armor's too big for any man. He drills his temple to his fingers in some strange regressive gesture. Kuno doesn't give a shit about that freak armor. Kuno threw that shit away. What do you mean threw it away? Kuno tried to get the helmet on. It was too big. He performs a kick off in the imaginary helmet. Kuno kicked that shit in the sea, rugby style. That means nothing to Kuno. You threw it in the sea? <coughs> yeah, that shit means nothing to Kuno. He repeats, Kuno doesn't give a shit about material shit. Kuno's a fucking monk. You wanna fuck on someone about the armor? Go fuck the mustache union fuck, the jolly troubadour shit at the gates. What do you mean, troubadour? Yeah, cock and boots? You know what jolly union co fucker. Cow fucker. Come around talking about cows or some shit. Came around pretend, pretending to be he cares about cows. Yes, man at the gates. The one with the boots and the jolly smile. You mean manana? Yeah, he's the one you want to talk to. He's fucking crazy about the armor shit. Coming here pretending like he owns cows, trying to catch a peep at Kuno's armor. This is the troubadour has it. Yes, this troubadour has it. You can feel it. <coughs> there are contusions all over his body. Did you do that? Fuck are you talking about? What is this contouche on shit? He grabs his head like it's suddenly hurting. He says you're stupid, Kuno. They want to make you stupid again. A contusion is a bruise. I'm talking about the marks your stones left on the corpse. Oh, did Kuno make your shit sniffling harder? Obstruction of shit sniffing? Sniffing? He lets go of his head, suddenly feeling better. This is Kuno's kingdom. Kuno fucking rules here. Hmm. You hear Lieutenant Hum? All right, let's get out of here. All right, well, I get, maybe let's let's go talk back to the guy about the gates. I want the armor now. I feel like that's even though I really want to go in the whirling rags, whirling in rags, because. I really want to um, hear the music in there. <laughs> I guess getting past the man ain't that simple after all. <clears throat> so, what now? Kuno told me you were supposed to know about the armor. Heh, <laughs> he smiles. The little boy uh, did good on his promise. His promise? To get me into trouble. To sick the pigs on me. Pardon the choice of words. Not mine. What happened? I was asked to look into the armor situation. Official Union probe, you know, track it down, see who took it. Did you? At first I thought, why not? Maybe the pieces can feed the strike. Buy us a few more days under the sun, you know? So went to this boy. He said he'll make me his prison bitch. He got eyes everywhere. The cops in his pocket, and he's king of the jam rock. Serves me right for doing menial footwork. I dropped the probe right then and there, and it was still got me in trouble. He smiles, one bad move is all it takes. probe into the armor. What did you learn? I learned that people don't want to talk about a drunk union man about some armor. Armor. What else? Not much. Technical stuff, mostly. That was the interesting part. What sort of technical stuff? I did some research into this armadura. Let's say I have friends at the library. He explains with a wry smile. I didn't get into the mater material science. Just how it comes off. How does it come off? In parts, four in total. The helmet was the first to go. The kid says he tore it off and kicked it into the sea. I believe him. The boots are still on the guy last I saw. Too hard to remove. So as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the caress. 
That's where I left off. Too much hassle. More like a job for some militia. Hold up. Four cur four pieces? How it Helmet, caress, gauntlets, and boots, what about leggings? Oh, they were just gone. They don't exist anymore, if they ever did at all. He gives you a, ho a jolly shrug. Forget about them. I did. I'm gonna find all of it. All of it? Lieutenant raises his brow. There are junior officers out there eager to prove themselves. I would leave some for them. But okay, let's find all of it. It's implied he finds it unlikely you will succeed in this. <coughs> A Meskis epic, then, all across Martinez. He glances south where the canal runs. I hope it will be a real bonanza for you. So Cuomo used it. Kuno used us to what? Scare you? It's a minor nuisance. It's all good. He contemplates taking a sleep from his flask. He thinks not yet. Better to get his business out of the way then. Sweeter then. Thanks for cooperation. Good talking to you. Alright, let's see. Advanced race theory. Everything is calm in the eye of the race storm. Your mind is lucid and bright, and mind bending phylogenetics appear more distant and, to be fair, a little ridiculous. The great race mystery is cleared up. All that's left to do is to verbalize your thoughts. Go and talk to Measurehead about your newly found insights. Okay. Oh, I can unlock. Ooh, I have two skill points. Can I use that? Oh, shit. Okay. So I unlocked that one. That's good. Um, I need probably physique, hand eye coordination, maybe? Encyclopedia, rhetoric, conceptualization. Uh, let's do this one. Uh, I don't know what I want to use this for. Suggestion, maybe? Charm men and women play the puppet master. Let's see this one. Okay, and then I want to go here, and I would like to internalize that. Good. And then we can go talk to this dude. I kind of want to try hitting him again. If he lets me. See, I'm promising. Race pupil return. I think I know what the race enigma is. And <coughs> the stump is ready to be superseded by the Aparagite Superstate. I serve as the clerk in your administration. Everyone can see that it has little to do with the race enigma. Baby, don't you mean Don't be mean. The woman pleads with Measurehead. Give him another chance. Anything for you, baby. Looks at the space right above your head and gestures as you speak. Did I miss something here? I don't know about the rest, but it's clear I should stop drinking the ancient Lumerian mind poison alcohol. Fascinating. <coughs> the phrenologic lines of his face move like a puzzle. The revocally and degenerate show signs of racial self reflection. How did you accomplish that little feat? It 
It's always been 100% clear to me that the answer to the race enigma is I should stop drinking. So it would seem, thrall of ghoul, I find myself a crossroads. On one hand, this pathetic self-therapy has little to do with the great mystery of living organism, the race enigma. And of course, you will not be able to free yourself from the yoke of the ghoul. It is too late. But it may be lethal to stop at this point, but still, he pauses in heroic doubt. If the Ravakulin degenerate is capable of critical thought, he may still prove a race adversary. Why should help my adversary? He looks down at the red button, seeking counsel from his own ideals. John, baby, do the heroic thing. First of all, I will stop drinking. That is not possible. The game of Shamat, you play against the ghoul, tricks the unwinnable. The days, the weeks, the months will wear you out. <laughs> the Occidental Happel group is inescapable of long-term lucid thought. You're wrong. I'll do it. I'm quitting. You will not. You cannot withstand the wasteland of reality. It's super hard, Jean. John. The woman looks at her fingernails. My mom couldn't do it either. Now open the door. I need to talk to Everard about getting the body down. Very well. You may enter once. He punches the emergency button with his fist. Our conversation here is concluded. <coughs> well done. Kim impatiently gestures towards the door. Let's go. Alright, so I want to get rid of race theory. I want to get wasteland of reality. It has been brought to your attention that you're an alcoholic, and that is a sickness. It's killing you. You're crawling out on your knees through your life and booze, filled belly, dragging on the ground. Your brain now fuzzy, now in overdrive. Your hair sticking together with today's cold sweat and yesterday's vomit. Perhaps you're right. Anything is better than this, even bone dry reality. Maybe you can quit. So I think this is all about quitting alcohol, so that's good. Is this, and this lets me in the door. Hey, now. Let's go. <coughs> Lots of stuff to look at in here. What is this? The door is locked. It cannot be opened this side without a pass card. Oh shit, we're locked in here now. Every worker equals member of the board is written on top of the flyers. I guess you have no choice but to talk to the union leader. <coughs> Below the flyers, the union logo and demand democracy. This is a Dewey typewriter. The model name is on the back. There's a tab, right, to see all the stuff I can do. It's uh, upstairs. The radio's emitting a strange sound. <coughs> punch clock payphone. An imposing combination of punch clock and payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the sign says, Tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. Um, insert 10 cents. The machine swallows your coins, seems to be wearing, waiting for your next move. Interfacing, challenging 12, let your muscle member dial, random number. Failed. It's unclear whether you actually have muscle memory. Right now your finger is just drawing vaguely occult patterns in the air. Um, useful patterns? Undoubtedly no. I might try this again later. Sure, why not? Muscle memory is a tricky thing. Okay, so there's a staircase that I can go up. Let's see what this stuff is first. Someone left the coffee machine on. The dark liquid in the pot looks almost sentient. Uh, standard office file cabinet drawers can be locked. On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the union to leave their paperwork lying around like this. Let's see what he, in it he thinks. Open the drawer. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Browse through the folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revacool from the outside world, from Mundi, Grad, and even Ilmaria. And the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revacool, Coron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock, are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. Anything interesting? Browse them. It's hard to make sense of this thicker thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Uh, Bullition. Force yourself to go through the folders. I gotta win one of these, right? Nope, I guess not. Look how blurry all the lines in these papers are. 
how unwieldy your own power is to yourself. You're like an absurdist Samaran monk, focusing through not focusing. Hermeneutics, hermeneutics were almost was almost within your grasp, but now only vague letters float before your eyes, less meaningful but aesthetically more pleasing. Could I actually focus through not focusing? You're a police officer, not a spiritual healer. You can focus the normal way by turning your attention to something and not letting go. <clears throat> if I let my eyes go completely out of focus, all shapes start melting into each other. Is that what you're dealing with those folders over there? Um, yes. Right. Lieutenant's expression stiffens. This is probably not relevant to our case. After all, we are not investigating an accounting mystery. Um, let's try it again. Nope, failed again. You're trying hard, but the data here is unbelievably dry. Something about containers. Alright, close the drawer, I guess. The drawer, drawer slides shut smoothly. Can I knock it back into it? Oh, I, I can. Alright, so let's see. What is this? Postcard. Okay. <coughs> Some stuff in the bathroom here. Neat office shades. More magnesium. Hell yeah. Get the magnesium up. Um, I thought I had a skill point. Did I use it? Alright, do I want to put the shades on? Glasses. Card it sells for a pretty penny. All right, so I'm gonna keep that stuff for now. All right, let's go up the stairs. <coughs> Man, I don't have any more water around me. I'm all my throat's all dry. Oh. All right, let's see what we got here. Ooh, there's a jacket I can steal. This is a whole new area. Policeman cloak. It looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging out on the railing here. There's a white rectangle clearly visible on the back. <coughs> this is your cloak. You can feel it. Lieutenant, I think that's mine. Yes, it does bear the RCM insignia, and we're the only detectives in Martinez. You think I should get it? The service cloak issued to you by your station? Yes, yes I do. Ooh, we got the cloak. As your fingers touch the tarpaulin, it almost feels that like the cloak wants you to deliver a message of comfort through your fingertips. I will shield you from the elements and give you my life, give my life for yours. That's what the cloak is relaying. Alright, well, let's put that shit on. Plus one is spirit to cores and one shivers. There you go. Know thy neighborhood. Hell yeah. Collecting rainwater. Can I see what this is? Or no? No, it's, it's gonna make me go this way. Okay. There's a bottle there, but I don't have a bag yet. <coughs> Let's go down here. All around you, the great machines in quiescence. White pine trees are printed on the screen covering. Looks like a forest under snow. Oh, I can go this way. Cool. Oh, what is that? It's a button. A rusting control panel with several knobs. Two buttons marked Illumer and Entendre are faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. The container is attached to its hook block. Illumer on, Entendre off. Uh, Illumer. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Oh, 
Uh, I hope that's not blocking us off. It was surprisingly quiet, Thunk. The crane places the container down. <coughs> the harbor sleeps as the strike rages in the distance. The crane can rest again now that the purpose has been fulfilled. What purpose? What do you mean? Moving this container, of course, for the purpose it was built, and for the purpose it act has acted, and now it will rest. I can't see how that was worth the ruckus, he looks at the crate, except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. The uh, crane does not return to its real position, it does not move at all. Press it on again. No screech of metal, when you push the button this time, only silence, the crane remains in a state of dormancy. Okay, well that didn't help us out at all. What is that? <coughs> Ooh, some change there. Where's this thing? You see faded industrial lighting on the platform of Cavalson. Cavalson means well fjord in Ardan. Let's check this out. Cargo container door. Before you stands a cargo container, just one of many in the yard. Kim, I think there's something in this container. You do? Because I don't. Well, why not? There are many containers here. Why are you fixating on just this one? It was just hanging from the... I don't know, Kim. It just feels special. It's a cargo container, Detective. Just like all the others. He doesn't even look at it. We're not here to interact with containers. We're here to get the body down from the tree. Open the door. <coughs> you attempt to turn the handle, but to no avail. The door seemed mechanically locked. To your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. Knock on the door. <coughs> no reply. Nothing more to do here now. You leave. Alright, I can't go up there. I can go this way. Is there anything up this way? Ooh, there's some stuff up there. Nothing over here. Some change. All the money. Ooh, there's a box. Fallen Ultra Series gloves plus half light. Who would have half light? The musk of oil and rust comes from the chasm in front of you. Smells like blood. <laughs> Unfiltered contact. What does half life do? Let the body take control. Threaten people. Oh, okay. I don't need those right now. Maybe later. Can I see it from here, maybe? The speaker tower is silent. There's no work to organize in the yard below. Okay. It's a couple things. There's some change. Industrial sized thermos. Smells like burnt coffee. Some more change. Banner sags under the weight of rain and snow. White raves, waves on red. <coughs> container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The lyrics of this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick it's possible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubi's son on Monday. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everett. The tiny man is so engaged, engaged in his work he doesn't notice you. Hi. Everett, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there. How can I help you, mister? I see you're not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? A shadow passes over his kind face. What is it with you people in scabs? I, mean, I don't personally mind. Folks are just folks, you know. And folks gotta eat. He doesn't seem to be waiting for you to answer. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. You're Ubi, right? Oh yes, born and raised in Arash, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new, new world. I was worried. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are all up to... Up up to all are all up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. 
I just want you to know, there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumors. <coughs> what are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some coverage for them containers there. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. He waves at the containers towering behind them. What's going on here? Look at the mountains of container rising behind him. The containers in the yard are green with wild pines livery, and the mountain rising behind Leo is all in red and union colors. It's like some red infection was spreading outwards from the container yard's core. <coughs> it looks like a massive redecorating, Kim. Redecorating. Yes, they're hiding it from inside. From the inside, all the red containers have Debauder's Union logo on them. Leo, has anyone told you why you need to change the covers? No, not really. He shrugs and confuses merrily. Mr. Everett doesn't tell me the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. Thanks, Leo. You've been very helpful. Do you work here? Yes, yes. Everyone needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bollock. But everyone calls me Leo. A little man raises his hand with a welcoming gesture. <coughs> I'm like Mr. Everett's right-hand man. When Mr. Edgar is out of town, and Mr. Edgar's right-hand man, when Mr. Everett is away. He chuckles. Actually, Miss Beaufort, Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. A good chuck, a good-hearted chuckle again. Who is this Miss Beaufort? Lieutenant looks up at Leo. A real pretty lady with skin like those do a sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once dinner is done and me and the missus sit down besides the radio. I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much going on around, to do around here. I'm always busy keeping things running. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, hold on. Who's this Miss Beaufort you mentioned? Oh, Lizzie? She's a real sharp tool. Miss Everett put her through. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything. East of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. <laughs> he respects that word. That's obvious. But she's a real nice girl, grew up here in the neighborhood, knows everybody, and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. <coughs> he goes on, if a missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Dr. Lemaitre said so, and she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. He sighs and files, falls silent, watching you meekly with his blue, blue eyes. So Everett trained a lawyer named Miss Buford. Interesting. I think you're doing a great job around here, Leo. Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. <coughs> well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. You didn't think it was possible. The smile becomes even wider. Oh. Sometimes I feel like the guys don't really get much how much I bust my ass for them. But you guys are alright. What's in the container over there? <coughs> oh, that one? He looks at the container. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Told you. Where is everyone? The harbor's empty. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates keeping the scabs from coming in. He leans in with a confidential look. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on a strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. <coughs> so, no one is working? Not everyone is down there, of course, he chuckles. Miss Everard is in, Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is, and Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. And Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble, and Everard sent them on a nice vacation for a week or so, but seems eager to tell you more. He stops, but he seems eager to tell you more. What kind of trouble did this Titus and his friends get into? <coughs> oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. Him and his boys stirred up something in town, probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling them to take some time off. <coughs> but what did they actually do? I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details, that's just how boys are, you know? <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hardies. He looks at you for assistance. Look at him. It's not going to be anything useful anyway. Don't fight it. Better go with the flow. Too rowdy. Leo, what kind of fight did they get into? Did they kill a mercenary? <coughs> Too late. Leo's mouth is still moving. His words are spewing forth. Words, words, and look. Even more words. The guy could go on for days. 
Now he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who, no, he's already switched to a price fishing prize, price fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut in there with your questions. I'm looking for the leader of the dock workers. Oh, you want Mr. Ebrard then? He's an awful nice fellow. He is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived here their entire lives in this here neighborhood. Guys like Mr. Ebrard and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Maiden Martinez, what it is, Maid Martinez, what it is today. Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Easy now, Leo. I just want to know where I can find this man. Oh, Mr. Everard is where he always is, in his office, of course. He points to the two joint containers to your right. Okay, I'm off. Thanks. Bye bye now. So that's. So this is his office? So I don't want to go in there yet. I would like to go back this way because I do not want, I do not wish to talk to him just yet. I like to go up here more <coughs> and investigate all of the stuffs. Oh hell yeah, there's more stuff here. <coughs> At least three packs worth of cigarette butts. Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red and Potent Pilsner. Can I go down there? All those empty wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground, someone partied real hard here. Wait, how hard? Well, they went through six bottles of Potent Pilsner, three bottles of Commodore Red, and almost four packs of cigarettes. It must have been pretty hard. Did I do this? Oh, shit. And I pushed the wrong button. Oh, it's looking here. Night Watchman's Booth. This is the Night Watchman's Booth. The name on the door reads Rene Arnaud. Listen, it's okay to take a few minutes to yourself. Sit down and have a breather. Kim, I'm going to take a quick look inside. <coughs> if you must. The lieutenant looks around, but please hurry. We're pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean. And sparse, sparse contents, meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Take the picture. Photo of a happy couple. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out on the street fair. The man is young, dark skinned, and dressed in a royal carabiner, carabiner, carabiner uniform. <coughs> the girl is smiling playfully at the camera. Why did you take that? Lieutenant asks. Um. Something about this man piques my interest. I think it can be a side thing. Fine, but let's move. I don't want to be seen sleeping around. Have a seat. Rest. The chair is not austere as the rest of the booth. The thin gray pillow is attached to seats, secured to the styles. Uh, get up. You stand next. I want to kind of search for a little something, something to help you get out. <coughs> The drawers are empty, save for some old sheets and time sheet. One small box, however, does hold some cheap painkillers. They're slightly out of date. Take them. You take the painkillers, you or no, read the side effects. Oh boy, where to start? Elevated risk of dementia, many strokes, profits disease, sudden death, hair death, erectile malfunction, critical flatulence, watery blood, black mucus, uncontrollable weeping, increased sensitivity to La Oprah. Inoperable joint disorder, total spinal collapse. Maybe this is a bad idea. You get up. Okay. You stand and exit the booth. Alright, well, I guess. <coughs> I guess I'll have to go down there at some point. Oh, shit, that's not a one. I guess just go back here. <laughs> Ship right ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. All right, let's go into this door, and I think that's going to be it for us right now. Um, um, out of like water and my throat's real scratchy and I got a bunch of phlegm all of a sudden because I'm all dried out. 
Um, so yeah, let's save this next time. We'll have a lot of stuff we can work on. Let's go ahead and save. And I will talk to you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.